So Dragonfly DB is a drop-in replacement of Redis that offers 25 times the throughput. But instead of using skip list to implement a sorted set, they use B plus trees to get a 40% improvement in memory and 500% improvement in throughput. This is a third video in the series and let's start with understanding how Redis implements sorted sets. Now sorted set is one of the most widely used data structure in Redis. It's used in building leaderboards or anywhere you, where you need priority queues sort of implementation. The whole idea is simple. It's a set with unique members, but with each member, a score is attached to it. The whole idea being that when you retrieve the elements, you retrieve it in that order, which is why it's used in building leaderboards or priority queue. Right? Because uniqueness is also guaranteed and order is also guaranteed, which is why they are called sorted sets. Now, Redis implements sorted set using skip list when the number of elements are more than 128. For less than that, it uses list pack, which is out of scope for this discussion. We'll focus more on skip list for this. Now, skip list as a data structure implementation is almost very common to implement sorted set with it. The whole idea is simple that in skip list, you have a bottom layer where all the elements are stored in the form of a link list. Right? Now, every layer above that, if you do a very naive implementation of it, your lookups will become order n. Right? All the insertions are far, but your lookups become order n, which is not a good thing because you need speed over here. So now here, what happens is you have an additional layers that sits on top of the bottom layer. Each layer on above the bottom layer has half the number of elements. Right? Now think of this as express lane and this is the slow lane. The whole idea is that when you're looking for a particular element, you would start from the fastest lane, right? And from there you move to the layer bottom and then to the layer bottom and then to the layer bottom. This way in almost log n lookups, you would reach the element that you are intended to reach. Right. The whole idea is, for example, if I'm looking for element 7, I would start with the express lane. I go over here. If I reach here, that would be end, but I have not yet reached 7. This is one element. So I'll go to the layer bottom and then go over here. 4 is less than 7. I go over 6 is less than 7. This is end because 7 is more than 6. I go to the bottom layer and then this is more than 7. This is 9. So I would come to the rear 6 and then I reach 7. This when almost log in look up, I reach to the element that I intended to. This is the whole idea of a skip list implementation. Now here, there is an overhead to it. Let's compute the overhead. Now, the video is going to be a bit of calculations, but it will be fun. You'll see how data structures need to be optimized for every single byte overhead that you see. It is really interesting discussion that we'll have now. Now, let's look at the source of Redis on how it implements skip list. Now, this is the actual snippet from Redis source code. The idea is simple that you have a Z skip list node, right? And in which for each node in the skip list, you have an element and you have a score to it, right? Now element is eight bytes. Your score is eight bytes. So the bare minimum amount of storage you need is eight plus eight, 16. Anything on top of that is an overhead of the data structure that it is implement that is being used to implement the uh, the functionality that we want, right? So in this case, skip list. So everything else is an overhead. Let's measure the overhead. The overhead that we measure it turns out to be roughly 37 bytes. For example, I would need to store a backward pointer, a forward pointer the span and at which level it is present at, right? So there is a bit of overhead that is assigned to it. For example, the forward data, the span, both of them are 88 bytes. So this becomes 16 bytes. And depending on each level, you would have those many elements in like those many occurrences of that, right? So if you measure it, if you do a simple benchmark, you would, uh, it turns out that the overhead of implementing your sorted set with skip list turns out to be 37 bytes. This is observed by running an experiment. Right? Now, on the other hand, now 37 bytes over it, it's an important figure. Let's keep that thing in mind. What Dragonfly DB did is they implemented it using B plus right? Now let's measure how, let's understand what B plus does and then we'll measure the overhead of it. So B plus is very simple. It has a branching factor. It is not a binary tree. It has, it has a wide range of branching factor and each leaf of a B plus tree, this is where your data is held. Right? Now each level or sorry, each leaf node of B plus tree is a 256 byte array. If each node is 256 byte array, how many entries can be added? The entries is what? 
the member and the score. So member is 8 byte, score is 8 byte. So each entry is 16 byte. Right? So how many entries can fit in 256 bytes? There will be 16 entries that will be fit in 256 bytes. So in this one leaf node, 256 entries can be fitted. Right? Now assume that I have 1000 entries. If I have 1000 entries, how many leaf node will be required? 1000 entries divided by how many entries in each node, which is 16. So roughly 67 leaf nodes will be required. If I need 67 leaf node and I assume a branching factor of 7 to 15, which is this. So how many inner nodes will be required? Roughly 10. So roughly 77 would be the total number of nodes that are required. Right? 256 bytes per node divided by total number of entries that we are storing is 1000 entries, which gives me a per key value or per element overhead of 19.2 bytes. Right? So for in if I was going for a skip list implementation, the overhead was 37 bytes. The overhead was 37 bytes. 37 plus 16 is what my total size of a like what an up an average size of a node would be. Right? Here my average size of node would be 19.2 out of which my essential is 16 bytes, the score and the member. So the overhead of for this is only three bytes from 37 byte overhead for a skip list implementation to a three byte overhead for a B plus three implementation. This is humongous save. Now this is theoretical. Let's see it in action. Like when, so when the benchmark, the B plus three based implementation of sorted set versus the skip list implementation of Redis, the results were amazing. Right. Now, for a single threaded Redis implementation for a Z at command. So what they did is they fired over a million Z at command at Dragonfly DB and at Redis, where each command contained 10 to 128 elements in each Z at and second set where they fired 129 to 200 elements in each Z at. Right. Now, when a single node implementation of Redis or a single thread implementation of Redis, it was capped at 3.5k, the QPS of it. 12K for a single threaded Dragonfly implementation, which is still better. It's still 4X of it. And 83K for an eight thread implementation of Red of Dragonfly. Right? That's how amazing the results are. Even for a larger set, the pattern still holds true. So we see that Dragonfly with a single thread is still better than Redis V7, which is amazing. And if we look at memory consumption, because what we computed was around the overhead that we observed. So memory consumption should be slower, uh, should be lower, right? And that is exactly what we observe. But here, if you break it down into two parts, where my Z implementation had like 10 to 128 keys that I am passing every time. Now, if we observe this, that because Redis uses list pack for implementation and not skip list, the difference is not, it's not huge. But as soon as when my large, when my sorted set has large amount of data, then you start seeing the difference. You can start seeing here, the lower consumption is better. The memory consumption of Dragonfly DB with eight threads is better than memory consumption of Redis to implement the same thing, right? So yeah, this is where you see the beauty of knowing the overhead and doing some bit of number crunching and getting the max out of your underlying hardware, which is what the design essence of Dragonfly DB has been. I would highly, highly recommend you to check out Dragonfly DB on GitHub. It's beautifully written code, but bit of C++, docs are amazing, blogs are amazing. I have put all the relevant links in the description and in the pinned comments down below. And this was the third video in the series. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton. Thank you.